Rick gave the order, and the two vehicles charged forward, heading straight into the zombie horde. The rope connecting them acted like a cutting machine, slicing through the zombies' bodies. They drove until they reached a crossroads, and Rick and Michonne quickly got out of the cars. They needed to break free from the encircling zombies as soon as possible. The zombies were already closing in, pulling at them relentlessly. They had to use all their strength to shake off the zombies. Once a zombie latched onto them, there was no chance of survival. Michonne is a little far away. Rick can only hold some of the zombies in place. Finally, with a narrow escape, they got back into the cars, though they managed to get away from the terrifying zombie horde. Rick was still shaken, it had been too dangerous, if they had been caught by the zombies, it would have been all over, after they had traveled more than 10 meters, the bombs they left behind exploded, so as not to arouse the savior's suspicions, soon, they returned to the community, but they hid the cars around it, as they couldn't risk the bombs inside being discovered, Tobin saw the group returning on foot and hurriedly approached them to ask what had happened, Rick didn't answer, he didn't want to reveal their confrontation with the saviors until he was sure. Just as they were speaking, the sound of car engines came from behind them. The saviors arrived in several large trucks, swaggering into the community. Rick and the others knew exactly why they were there, but they had to pretend they didn't know. Simon was leading the group this time, imitating Negan's every move. Simon told Rick they were looking for Daryl. Rick retorted, didn't you guys take him away before? Simon pointed at Carl and said, your son visited. And then Daryl disappeared. We suspect there's a connection. Then Simon ordered his men to search the community. If they found Daryl here, Simon intended to kill him in front of everyone. Rick couldn't stop them from searching the community. Luckily, Daryl had stayed in the kingdom. These bandits went into every house and destroyed everything inside. Not looking for people, but just vandalism. Later, Simon reached the warehouse. But the shelves that once held food were now empty, making him wonder if they had hidden the goods. Rick was also puzzled. Everything seemed to have disappeared. Simon warned them that hiding supplies was a grave offense with dire consequences. Aaron improvised, saying they had too many people, and finding food had become increasingly difficult. He explained that their recent focus was on getting what Negan needed, and they were still adjusting to the new system. Rick quickly adopted a submissive tone, assuring Simon that they would find more supplies today. And if he was willing to wait, they'd bring them back soon. Simon was pleased with their attitude, telling them to relax as they weren't there to collect tribute today. After the saviors searched the community and found no trace of Daryl, they left. Once they closed the gates, Rick turned around and asked what had happened in the storage room. Aaron said they were not sure, but it seemed to be related to Gabriel. Tobin added that Gabriel was on duty yesterday when Rick went out, but when he came to change shifts in the morning, he didn't see Gabriel. The storage room and the armory were also empty, and a car was missing, and no one had seen Gabriel. Rosita immediately cursed, believing that the coward had fled with supplies. Others joined in, as the evidence seemed clear, however, Rick didn't believe it. Gabriel had been weaker before, but his transformation was evident, and his eyes wouldn't lie. So, the group headed back to the warehouse. Gabriel's Bible was still lying on the ground. Rick picked up the dropped Bible and searched for clues, but unfortunately found nothing. Others speculated that recent events might have frightened Gabriel, causing him to abandon everyone and run away. However, Rick knew that even if Gabriel ran away, he would never leave his Bible behind. He cherished it. The others searched around but found no traces. Rick then flipped open the register and found four letters written on the last page, spelling the word ship. This was Gabriel's message. Rick and Aaron immediately thought of a place. This place is where Aaron and Rick found the supplies earlier. But how did Gabriel know about it and leave a message? The truth could only be known by visiting that place. An hour later, Rick led the group back to the lakeside. They carefully searched the area for any clues left by Gabriel. Soon, Rick noticed something, footprints along the lake's edge. They followed the trail into the woods. After a while, they arrived at a house where clear footprints still remained, indicating possible recent habitation. The group cautiously surveyed their surroundings. Suddenly, a noise rang out. They turned their heads to see that a man in black was aiming a gun at them, and there were several other men in black not far behind them. Immediately after, a large number of women with weapons walked up. They remained silent, and the men also had long hair. They swarmed in such an eerie manner, 
and their numbers kept increasing, at least nearing 100 people. They surrounded Rick and the others, the rest of the group looked tense, unsure if these people would harm them, but Rick smiled as he saw them. These people were part of a new organization living in a scrapyard, remaining undiscovered for a long time. They all dressed in black, and the men had long hair and a tall stature. The women were also valiant and exuded an aura of majesty. In contrast, Rick's group felt somewhat small amidst this crowd. Soon, they were surrounded. A tall woman walked forward, carefully studying the man before her, Rick. Rick introduced himself, but the woman didn't respond. Instead, she threatened, saying their lives were in her hands and demanded valuable items as a ransom. Rick explained that one of their group, Gabriel, had been captured by them, and he wanted to see him first before discussing anything. The woman nodded to her companion, and a few minutes later, Gabriel was brought to the scene, his clothes taken away, but seemingly unharmed. Rick finally let go of his heart. As long as the people are fine is the best, he knew he hadn't misjudged them. Feeling Rick's eyes, the terrified Gabriel also had some confidence. This team did not let him down. The woman then said that they had been eyeing the supplies on a ship for a while but hadn't risked going for it. After Rick and Aaron took it, they were followed by this group. But unfortunately, the saviors got hold of the supplies again. They were trying to sneak into the community warehouse to steal something, but they ran into Gabriel on patrol and took him away. Rick mentioned that the supplies in the warehouse were meant for trading lives. He warned that they would soon have nothing left. The saviors wouldn't spare any group. Encountering the saviors left them with two choices, to be killed or enslaved. However, there was a third option, joining Rick's group and resisting them. This was the reason Rick had smiled when he saw so many people. They needed more members in their fight. The woman mocked Rick, but after a moment of silence, she declined Rick's proposal, signaling her men to take Gabriel away. Soon, others surrounded Rick's group, preparing to subdue them. Rosita was the first to resist. Rick tried to stabilize the situation and suggested they all sit down and talk. Let us go, or I will kill her! Gabriel understands that these people are only interested in profit, so he spoke up and said that this organization the Saviors, they have other places, other communities, they've raided more things than they can count, food, weapons, cars, fuel, everything you could want, the Saviors had. The woman listened, and her interest was piqued. She gestured for her men to put away their weapons. Clearly, this woman wouldn't be swayed by ideals, so they had to appeal to her interests. Although the men put away their weapons, Gabriel remained wary of them. Rick nodded at Gabriel, who then raised his knife above his head and dropped it to the ground. The woman didn't change her mind and asked Gabriel to explain in more detail. Gabriel composed himself and said that if they joined forces to eliminate the saviors, they could get a lot from them. The amount of supplies the saviors had was beyond imagination and could sustain them for at least 10 years. The woman looked at Gabriel, considering his words. She then had her men take Rick to a slope. The others looked puzzled, wondering what this was about. Michonne was worried, but Rick assured her to relax. They probably wanted to see his capabilities. Rick followed the woman inside while the others waited outside. Michonne asked the woman nearby where they were taking Rick. The woman pointed upwards, and everyone's gaze followed. They had reached the top of a garbage dump. Rick took a closer look and realized that this place had been a garbage disposal area before the apocalypse. As Rick wondered why they brought him here, the woman began to speak more about their group's survival. They had been cautious, only scavenging for easily accessible food. But things were getting worse, and many canned goods were rotten. The proposal Rick made had its merits. They indeed needed to change. However, they wanted to see if Rick's group was worthy and capable. 